Welcome back to another edition of Combat Corner. This is your boy Rudy Rodriguez Showmont here. I am jumping on to record a Combat Corner session as we have had some big time UFC fights announced in the past month. We have a monster fight coming up next Saturday. So I wanted to jump into it and talk about these fights because there are some exciting fights that have been set up. The fight card that's coming up in, Eng in, in England, the United Kingdom, with Leon Edwards and Bilal Muhammad was just announced. That card is sick. The main card, I love it. It's exciting. You know, people jumped on me about UFC 300. I personally think that the main card at UFC 304 in Manchester is a better card. The main card is amazing. Absolutely amazing. So kudos to the UFC for putting that together because that is a big time card in my opinion. But let's jump into the first topic at hand. John Jones was just announced in the past week or so to be fighting Stipe Miocic in November at Madison Square Garden, which seems to be the place that the UFC goes now every year in November. They are making it an annual event where they go to MSG in New York City. And I have a few comments on that fight. <clears throat> I don't give a fuck. I don't care. This fight is so long overdue that it just doesn't matter anymore. Stipe Miocic will be 42 years old and not having fought a fight in like four years. John Jones will have been a champion holding a belt for almost two, a year and a half since he won the belt over Cyril Gaon. I just don't have any interest. It doesn't have the buzz or the excitement that I would have want, what, what I think any fight fan would have hoped for. Because I'm on lots of MMA boards, and I can tell you that not a lot of people care about this fight that I see from what I'm reading. It doesn't have that, that, that pop because most people want to see John Jones fight Tom Aspinall, who is the interim champion. It's the fight that makes sense. It's the fight that people find as the most dangerous fight for John Jones. I don't find Stephen Miocic to be that dangerous a fighter at this point. He's 42 years old when they fight. Not having fought in four years, like who gives a shit? If John Jones wins that fight, who cares? Does it prove anything? I mean, seriously, does it prove anything? I don't think it proves a thing. Because John Jones is John Jones, and he's a great, great fighter, and arguably the greatest fighter ever. But the way his career is gone, <clears throat> he doesn't want to fight the fighter that everyone thinks is the biggest badass in the heavyweight division. And that's Tom Aspinall. Tom Aspinall is a monster. He hits hard. He's fast. He's strong. But if you think you're that dude, why won't you fight him? And don't give me this crap that John Jones is posting because he's been posting lots of nonsense. You know, comments about how recently it was a comment about Tom Brady and Tom Brady go win me two more Super Bowls. What? Because John Jones has the most title defenses, and I guess he's got nine title defenses, and Brady's got seven Super Bowls. Is he really comparing the Super Bowl to, to title defenses? <clears throat> because winning a Super Bowl in football is a lot harder than winning a championship in the UFC. It is, because it's a team sport. You're relying on too many other factors beyond yourself. To win a fight, you rely on yourself. So you control the outcome. You control who wins and who loses. Tom Brady doesn't control who wins and who loses. Tom Brady can only do his part on a football team because if his defense gives up 45 points and he scores 42, <clears throat> he loses, even though he may have played great. I just don't have any interest in this fight. It, it doesn't excite me. I hope the rest of the card, it just doesn't jump off the page like it did a couple years ago. We wanted to see that fight three to six months after he fought Cyril Gaon. We didn't want to see the fight a year and a half later. It's just the way it is. There's too much. Th there are too many moving parts in the UFC that keep you excited about a fight. Now, we do have the announcement also of Michael Chandler and Conor McGregor at UFC 303 in Vegas. I have the same feelings about that fight that I have of John Jones and Stipe. It's whatever. Do I want to see? I have, do I have more interest in that fight? Yes, I do have more interest in that fight. Because these guys aren't over the hill. 
However, Conor McGregor, they're fighting at 170. If Conor was to get a win, what comes next? He claims that he's going to fight again in August, September. He claims he's going to fight again in December. And he claims it'll be for a title. I don't know. I think Michael Chandler's going to beat him. So it doesn't really matter. I, I think Chandler was going to beat him, and I think he'll knock him out. <laughs> Although I think Chandler would be smart to wrestle because McGregor still can't really wrestle. He never has been able to wrestle at a, at a high level. I think the best chance that McGregor has is if, if, is if Chandler tries to engage in a firefight, which would probably be a mistake on Chandler's part to do that. I think he should wrestle, look for takedowns, and try to ground and pound him. That's my opinion. Um, the fight itself is a main event, yet the card as a whole, Jamal Hill, Carlos Olberg as a co-main event, as Khalil Roundtree is now out because he tested positive for some PEDs that he claims he didn't know anything about. Whatever. Who cares? Um, Jamal Hill better win that fight because Carlos Olberg just came off of a quick win over Alonzo Minifield. Um, I think it was 15 seconds or so. Olberg's a great fighter. But he's ranked 11th, <clears throat> and Hill's ranked third. And if Hill loses this fight, this is bad for his career, really bad, in fact. You have Mara Bueno Silva on that fight against Macy Ch Chason, Joe Pfeiffer, Mark Andre Barriolt. And now you have Ian Gary, Ian Machado Gary versus Michael Page, now on UFC 303. I thought they would put that Gary Page fight in England or Manchester or whatever as well, because that's where both these guys, I mean, that's where Paige is from. <clears throat> but they put Ian Machado Gary on the, on the card with Conor McGregor. So that does spice up that card a little bit. There are some good fights, but <clears throat> this is not a typical international fight week pay-per-view. It's lacking a championship. It's lacking... It's lacking a lot. It's lacking a lot. I, I, I don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm just not impressed by this card. For, for now, it already broke all gate records because McGregor's on it. And the UFC has probably increased the price of tickets through the roof. They're making the UFC almost un, impossible to watch in person for a regular middle class person. Because these tickets are becoming so overpriced. It's crazy. That said, it'll probably do 1.5 to 2 million pay-per-view buys because of Connor, as he does have that power. He has that drawing powder, power, and he will always have that power because he has cult-like, a cult-like following. Beyond that, you have the fight with Robert Whitaker and Kamzat Chemaev. That is a fight night card in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. This is the first time the UFC is going to Saudi Arabia. This is exciting. This is exciting because Robert Whitaker, you know, is a former champion. And he's beaten everyone else except for the champion and the former champion in Drikas Duplessis and Israel Adesanya. But Robert Whitaker is still a bad dude. He's coming off of a big win over Paulo Costa. And now he is fighting against Chemayev, and he is a betting underdog, plus 170. I would tell you right now, this is a five-round fight. Chimaev has never had a five-round fight. His toughest fight to date was the fight versus Gilbert Burns. That was a three-round fight that I thought Burns won. However, if it had gone five, I have no doubt Burns would have won because Chimaev is gassed in that fight. He was totally gassed. Now I gotta tell you, this is a, this is a, this is a humongous fight for the UFC. It's a humongous fight for the division because obviously, if Chimaev wins, he is gonna get a title shot in his next fight. It doesn't matter who it is, whether it's Drukas Duplessis who's gonna face Adesanya later this year, or Izzy. I would think the UFC would want Izzy to win that fight. I think it's clear that they do. He has great drawing power. But regardless of who it is, 
Duplessis is probably a stylistically worse matchup for Chimaev than Adesanya. However, this fight's exciting. I'm stoked about this fight. I'm excited to see it. It's on June 22nd. It's a 3 p.m. main card start on ABC. This is a fight. And now, what happens if Whitaker wins? If he wins and Adesanya wins, is he going to get an, a, a third fight with Adesanya? Or if Strickland beats Costa in, uh, in a couple of weeks, next weekend, is Strickland going to get a fight versus Adesanya? Or if du, Duplessis wins, does Whitaker get a rematch with du, Duplessis who beat him? Or does Strickland get that fight? I think Strickland's going to beat Costa. <clears throat> so I think there's going to be a lot of things that are going to come up here. I love the fight. I love the fight. The card, you have Sergei Pavlovich and Alexander Volkov. Some heavy hitters at heavyweight. Love that fight. Pavlovich wins. He's right back in the conversation for a title shot. If Volkov wins, he's in the conversation for a title shot. Johnny Walker and Volkan Ozdemir. That's a fight. That's a fun fight. This number seven versus number nine. Walker's coming off of a loss. This could put either one of them in prime position to be a couple fights away from something really meaningful. Kelvin Gastelum versus Daniel Rodriguez. Two similar body fighters. Pudgy in the, in the middle. But guys that like to throw hands. Exciting fight. You know, um, it's, it's, it's going to be a nice card. But I am really, really excited about that fight with Whitaker and Chimaev. So make sure you check that one out. And now <clears throat> we go into next week, UFC 302. This is an awesome card to me. I, I love it. I love this card. I, I mean, it's... <clears throat> how do I put it this way? Dustin Poirier did exactly what he had to do to put himself in the position to get a title shot. When he knocked out Benoit Saint-Denis. But there's no way in the world that he could fight that way and beat Islam Makachev. And I'm a massive Dustin Poirier fan. I'm a huge Dustin Poirier fan. And, but if he fights trying to jump guillotines, the way he did versus Benoit Saint-Denis, he will lose. And he will lose badly. He will lose badly. That would be a catastrophic error. I don't think he's dumb enough to do that. Because when Makachev is on top, it's very hard to get him off. I know Volkanovski did in their first fight. But Deporia doesn't have that same type of wrestling ability that Volkanovski has. Poirier has got to keep this fight standing. He has got to keep this fight standing. I don't think Makachev is the wrestler that Khabib Nurmagomedov was. I don't think he's the fighter that Khabib was. So I think Dustin can win the fight. I think he has a legitimate chance to win this fight. But it is 1,000% on keeping this fight standing. He's a massive underdog. Plus 360. Makachev is minus 470. I'll put my money on Dustin. Because it's a value bet. But if he keeps this fight standing, I don't think Makachev can beat him. Because I think Tori is a better striker. Much better striker. That said... The threat of the takedown always exists. So does it make him more hesitant to let his hands go? I don't think he can throw a lot of kicks. I think the kicks that he can throw are lower calf kicks, like he threw on McGregor. I don't think any kick he throws should go above the knee. Every kick he throws should be at the calf. Because I think if he throws one high, it can get caught and he gets put in his back. I give Makachev credit for giving him this title shot because the reality is he could have picked a bunch of guys. There was other people that he could have picked. You know, um, Armand Sarukian. Armand Sarukian could have gotten... Arm Armand just beat Oliveira. 
I, I believe that Armand Sarukian turned the fight down with Makachev because the turnaround was too fast for him. I think that's a mistake. I, I think when you have a title shot offered to you, you take it. It's not like he hasn't fought Makachev before. They're very similar in style. Wrestle heavy guys. Makachev beat him in a close fight when they fought earlier on. Um, but overall, I think this is a great opportunity for Dustin. It's his last chance. He won't get another one. And if he doesn't take care of business, I think that he will retire because there's nothing really left for him to fight for. <clears throat> but if he wins, I cannot see him retiring. I can't see Dustin Poirier hanging it up after winning the belt. I just can't. Who does he fight, though? And that's where it gets interesting. Because if Conor McGregor wins at the end of June, <laughs> I can absolutely see a fight between Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor in December for the championship at 55. I see it happening because they have three fights already. Of course, Conor claims he didn't lose the second fight, even though he's getting his ass kicked and broke his leg. Which, guess what? That's part of fighting. But it's also a monster moneymaker for, Dust for Dustin Poirier. And Dustin Poirier would win that fight probably in a cakewalk. To me. I know he said he has no interest in that fight. Yeah. If you give him $10 million, he has interest. You give him 10 $15 million bucks, he will have interest. So, obviously... <clears throat> we are way far ahead of ourselves as we have to have this fight happen first. But I do think that Dustin Poirier with a win will fight again. It's a matter of who. And how long, I don't know. He may fight one time and say, that's it. I want to defend the belt once and call it a, call it a day. But these guys are fighters, so you never know what the hell's going to happen. They come back all the time. So nothing really surprises me. With fighters on that card, beyond Dustin and Makachev, you have a great co-main event in Sean Strickland and Paulo Costa. Again, I think Sean Strickland wins this fight, and he sets himself up for a title shot. That's my guess. If he wins, if Whitaker beats Chimaev, I think Strickland gets the title shot over the winner of DDP and Adesanya. But if he loses, I think the winner of Chimaev and Whitaker get a title shot. You also have Michael, Kevin Holland on this card against Michael Ola, can't pronounce his name, Ola Zajek. Uh, Kevin Holland, after that fight versus Michael Lennon Page, I really don't care anymore. I was excited about that fight against Page, and he did, and Holland did absolutely nothing. Um, Jalton Almeida, we'll get to see how he looks after he lost that fight with Curtis Blades. He's fighting Alexander Romanov. You got Randy Brown and Alessio Zaleski Dos Santos. Overall, it's a good card. I think a fun fight you're going to see is Nico Price and Alex Morono. Uh, those guys go at it. But, uh, yeah, we got some big fights coming up. Exciting stuff in the works for the UFC. And I'm looking forward to a fun month and a half of Throwdown. So let's get it, man. Get excited and make sure you check out all these fights. Talk to you soon. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up-to-the-minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.